Have you guys ever noticed there's something missing on the front of my Super Duty? That, of course, would be the engine. And you know, the number one question I get asked, <laughs> excuse me, I, I was wondering, what, what engine are you going to put in your Super Duty? I'll be talking about that in this video. So stick around, don't go anywhere, and let's talk engines. You know, that really is the number one question I get. People have asked me in the comment section, they've asked me in email, and this last year at the Zenith Fly-In, almost every single person that came up to me from the channel and introduced themselves, the first question they asked was, what engine am I going to install in the Super Duty? And honestly, I've known for a long time what engine I'm going to install, but I've never really answered those questions, at least uh, on the, the comment section in public, because I know how the internet is, and I know how people defend the engine choice that they made. So if I say I'm going with brand A, people will type in the comment section, why do you hate brand B? And I don't hate brand B. I think every engine out there offers something. But I did make a choice a long time ago, and since, since so many people are asking, uh, and I need to order my engine very soon, I might as well tell you what I'm going to install in my Super Duty. All right, so let's start off with the list I made a while ago of requirements that I had or what I was looking for in an engine. And I think I've said this before, I kind of want this airplane as close to certified as I can. Um, just meaning, uh, you know, it's an experimental airplane, but I don't really want to be experimenting. I'm not an engine guy. I don't want some sort of experimental engine in there. I don't want an auto engine. I don't want gearboxes. I want something that's been tried and true, a, 100,000 times that I can bolt in my airplane and feel confident in it. Especially, like I said, because I'm not an engine guy, I don't really know how to work on engines. Um, I just don't wanna be tinkering with cooling systems and gearboxes and things like that. Now, one of the other requirements I had is I wanted an engine from a reputable company that's been around for a long time and that I can feel fairly confident that it will be around for a long time in the future, just in case I ever need some support or parts or something like that. Now, I have on my list here reliability, and I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? Nobody wants to buy an engine that's not reliable. <laughs> but again, it goes back to that proven technology that's been around forever. And I know a lot of guys that like the auto engines are going to say, oh, something like a Lycoming or a Titan is old technology and the new car engines have all this great technology. And I can't argue that, that might be true. But again, my requirements are simple, reliable, something that's been around forever and that's proven itself. Uh, the other thing I have here is availability of parts. Um, and that kind of goes with some of these other things like I want an engine that any mechanic can work on because, you know, obviously this is the Super Duty. It's an off airport airplane. One of the things I'm really looking forward to is flying out west and going to all those backcountry airports. I want the reliability for flying over some mountains and things like that. But I, if, I, if something does come up and I need some work done on the engine, I want to be able to take it to any FBO out there and have them be familiar with the engine and be able to work on it. The other thing that's a factor in my decision is insurability. I, I don't want to sound like I'm talking bad about auto engines, but I know people that have auto engines in their airplanes and had a very hard time getting insurance for them. And then something like a Lycoming, which is what I'm putting in my airplane, is easily insurable. The insurance companies are very well familiar with them, and I should have no issues at all with a known airframe like the Zenith with a known engine like the Lycoming. Now, if you guys aren't that familiar with Lycoming, they have a line of engines called Thunderbolt. And the Thunderbolt engines are the hand-built custom engines for experimental aircraft. Let's look at the Lycoming website and take a look. Well, the first thing we can do is go to lycoming.com, and this is their website here. You notice on the top, they have two tabs here, products, which we'll take a look at in just a second, and company. And the company, has some pretty neat links here. The history of Lycoming, the factory, some distinctions, tours, and the, the people that work there. And it's pretty interesting if you want to get familiar with the company. But if we go to the products page, we can go to Thunderbolt Engines. And as you can see, the Thunderbolt Engines are Lycoming's brand of high performance, built to order power plants for experimental aircraft. Here's some of the benefits down here of the 
the, uh, th the Thunderbolt engines. And this is the one that, that I really like here. The, the balanced rotating system within a half a gram. I was talking to, talking to Jeff Scons at the Zenith uh, fly-in about this. And I mean, it's just really impressive. When you have an engine that's that finely balanced, it runs a lot smoother, which means less vibration. And in an airplane as slow as a Super Duty, I'm going to be spending a lot of time in cruise flight, just getting out into the back country. And if I can spend that time be behind a quiet, smooth running engine with less vibration, that would be awesome. <laughs> the other thing that's neat here is uh, customized paint options. And one of the things I envisioned for mine with the paint scheme and everything I'm doing on my Super Duty is I, I really want my engine black with chrome, um, valve covers here. I just think it would look really good. That's what my pits has. I think the pits might be gray, but it has the chrome uh, valve covers and it looks really nice. I think that would look really cool on the Super Duty. Then if you go to Thunderbolt Engine Builder here, you can go to Start Building and it puts together some options here. Now there are different options for the Thunderbolt engines and this is what I want to talk about next because I'm trying to decide between one of two engines. When I was at the Zenith fly-in this summer, and Lycoming had the representative there, Jeff, uh, I picked up two brochures from him, and one of them is for the IO360, and the other one is for the IO390. Now the difference basically between these is 180 horsepower versus 210 horsepower. Now obviously more power is more better, right? Everybody wants more power, but of course there's trade-offs. The O390 is more expensive, and the higher the power, the more the fuel burn you're gonna have. And the more fuel burn you have, the less distance you can go on a given amount of fuel, which means if I'm trying to get far out into the back country, if I'm burning more fuel per hour, I can't go quite as far. But I really don't know which one I want, the IO360 or the 390. You know, here's my thought on power, and I'm making up numbers here, but let's say the 360 is 180 horse and I'm out in Idaho and it's a hot summer day and we have a real high density altitude. Let's say that engine and propeller combination is only producing, let's say 160 horsepower. Well, now I'm down to 160, but if I start with 210 and let's say I lose 20 horsepower because of the high density altitude, now I'm down to 190. So I still have more power, um, starting off obviously with more power. So I'm not sure if I want to go with a 210 horse and spend the extra money and fuel burn for the IO390 or settle for 180 horse and go with the IO360. What would you guys do? Seriously, leave a comment below. Let me know what you would do if this was your setup. Now I have these two brochures from Lycoming laid out here and let's take a look at some of the info on here. All right, if we look at the spec sheet for the IO360, and you can see there's a lot of different engines listed on here. The top half of the page is the O360, so that's the carbureted, ver carbureted version. And of course, I would want the fuel injected version. And we have, I guess, three different ones here that technically would work. We have an A, B, and an M. And you can see a little bit of the differences in these. The A and B, it's 200 horse versus 180. Then we come down here to M, and that's back to 180. Um, but let's look at the A versus the B. With the A model being 324 pounds to 335 pounds, that's for a 200 horse IO360. But if we look at the IO390A, we can see that that is also, or that's 210 horsepower, but look at the weight, it's only 307 pounds. So why would I go with a heavier IO360 when I can go with a lighter uh, 390 and have 10 more horsepower, <laughs> right? So those are some of the things I don't understand that I definitely would need to talk to Lycoming about. Now let's head back to the Lycoming website because there are some other options we need to look at when selecting an engine. And let's look at the IO390 because that's the one I'm leaning towards. But again, guys, really leave a comment below and let me know which one you would choose. All right, we're on the Thunderbolt engine page here. I'm going to click on the Thunderbolt engine builder, and then I'm going to click on start building. Now, of course, we have our different engines here. I'm going to, to go with the 390 for now, and then we'll hit the little arrow here to continue. So the page that comes up here is the colors you can choose from. They have black, gray, and red. I'm sure there's probably more custom colors if you really wanted it, but I think I would go with black. 
with the, the chrome valve covers. And then we can go up here to engine options. And this is kind of where, you know, I have to do a lot more research and talk to some knowledgeable people at Lycoming because we have fuel injection system. You select which one you want, the Airflow Performance or the Avastar. And although I did Google these and look at their web pages to try to educate myself a little bit, I really don't know what the difference is between them or which one's better or which one might fit my needs more. And then they have ignition system here, the traditional ignition system, which I, I'm assuming is just the, the magnetos. Then you have the electronic system here. And then of course there's different things you can do with uh, you know, one mag and one electronic or things like that. So again, I need to talk to somebody that's, that's a lot more knowledgeable than I am. And that's why I said I'd really like to drive out to Lycoming and sit down and talk to the experts there. Well, there you have it guys. That is my choice of engine for the Super Duty. Definitely going with Lycoming. I just need to narrow it down now between the IO360 and the IO390. Now, like I said, I did want to drive out to Lycoming and visit the factory and maybe get a tour. I would like to film that tour if they'll let me so that you guys can take a look at the factory too, but also obviously to go and talk to the experts there and narrow, narrow down all of the options and finally select uh, the engine that's right for me. If you guys have watched my videos for a while, you might remember that I've been working with Steve at Aircraft Specialty and we've been working together to come up with the entire brake line system for the Super Duty and the fuel lines. And as soon as I start installing the engine, we will get all of the, the fuel and oil lines that go ahead of the firewall. And all those lines will be fire sleeved. All of Steve's um, lines are pressure tested. They're real good, high quality steel braided lines that you virtually never have to replace. But the ultimate goal is if working together with Steve, eventually if you're building a Super Duty and putting in a Lycoming engine, then you can call them and say, I just want the Super Duty kit. <laughs> and uh, he'll have all of the fuel lines, the oil lines, the brake lines and everything all cut to the proper size. And then you just go ahead and install it. You don't have to do any measuring or figuring out on your own. So that's a real nice benefit. And I really appreciate, uh, you know, Steve working together with me on that. So anyway, that is my choice of engines. I know you guys have been asking for a long time. So next time somebody asks, I'm just gonna say, check out my YouTube channel. <laughs> We'll see you guys on the next video.